What are particles? They are simply put, visual eye candy made in your graphics card and not your CPU. In this video I show you how to set up a particle system that will create those particles. So what exactly can you do with those particles? Imagine a simple rain effect, blood splatter, fire, dust, smoke and tons of other things. They are used in every modern video game and movie. Using particles is an advanced part of programming in video games. It is easy to understand but requires lots of tinkering. Let's get started. In order to use particles in Game Maker Studio you have to first set it up in two key steps. Step 1. You need to create a particle system in one object for it to be used at all. Assign it to a variable of your choice to access it. It is basically saying to GameMaker, yup, I want to use particles. Step 2. You need to define what kind of particle type and how many different types you want. Analog to step 1. You create a blank particle type and assign it to another variable. I use a specific order with three crucial parts. What kind of particle type you want, how it will look like and where it goes. This is just a personal preference, but you can order them in any way you like. Leave out those you don't need. First, what you want. Remember the particle type variable you created? Well, this variable is now being used to set up the specific particle type in detail with a lot of functions. First, do you want to use a predefined shape like a pixel, circle, flare, ring and so on? In that case you have to define part type shape. Do you want to use something else? Then you use part time sprite. Here you define further if you want the sprite to be animated, stretched or started by a random sub image. Note that the default is a pixel shape when both options are not being used at all. Now we come to the lifespan of the type. This one is very important because it is linked to a lot of factors on how the particle will be like in the end. How it looks like. With part type shape you can skew the particle. Part size defines how big the particle will look like when it starts. The min max values are arranged for its starting value. A value more than one will enlarge and less than one will make the shape or sprite smaller than the original size. Remember when I said that the particle life is linked? Well, this is one of those cases here. You can increase or decrease the size per step. The longer the life is, the longer it will grow or shrink. Small values are key here. And lastly, you can wiggle with a size between minus 20 and 20. To be honest, I never use it. Can be useful, I guess. Next is type orientation. Here you define the rotation. It is analog to the concept like part size. To min max start values, increase and decrease and the wiggle. Whether to set the particle relative to the direction angle or not. Color. You have three options available. Use one color, do a color gradient in the lifespan between two and three values. Very useful to create a fire effect that starts with a red color, fading into a yellow one and finally to fade into a gray color. The colors are in GML raw format. Use predefined colors like C red and so on. Or use a color picker for custom ones. Link in the description below. Color blend. With this simply you define if the particles will blend. Turning this on will enable an additive blending of colors when particles overlap. This effect is pretty neat. I always have it turned on. Where it goes. In the type direction you define its movement direction to head to. Note that left is 0, 270 is down and so on. Define the range of direction to go. For example 0 and 295 is a full circle. The next value lets you increase the direction. If you put any other value than 0 then it will result in a swirl movement. And last thing, wiggle. Part time speed. Again min max start values and an increase or decrease and the wiggle. Skip on this one. Gravity. Basically it is an extra counter force with an amount and a direction. Direction is most of the time 270 which is downwards. We are done with this setup. And now comes the question how to actually spawn them. There are two methods on how to do that. The quick but effective method which limits your spawning to one spot and the full control with setting up your own particle emitter. Let's start with the easy and quick method. You simply use the function part particles create. It needs as input the location of the particle system to use, x and y as the position where to spawn the particles, the particle type and the amount of particles to spawn. And that is it. Fairly fast to use. The full control is a different beast. You have to create your own emitter. Imagine an emitter to be like a gun, shooting particles. It needs two things to work. The position to shoot at and how to shoot. First, you need to create a blank emitter and assign the particle system to it. Once that is complete, you use the function emitter region to tell the emitter where to shoot. Here you can go with a single point or predefined shapes like an ellipse or a diamond or a line. 
Finally, you need to give a pattern of distribution, which are linear, Gaussian and inverted Gaussian. Use Gaussian if you want a more clustering or linear for an even distribution. Just play around with the shapes and distribution patterns to get the result you need. Last thing is how you want to shoot the particles. If you want to do it in a single burst, you use the emitter burst function or else you use the constant stream emitter stream function. These two functions need their system, the emitter and the particle plus the amount of particles to spawn every step. That is basically it. Well, almost. To make the whole thing a little bit more efficient and avoid memory leakage, you need to destroy the particle system, the particle type and the emitter when they are not needed. That can be done, for example, by destroying the emitter once the instance is destroyed, when you change the room or when the game is being closed. Are you still here? And that was a lot of information and way too long. If you get lost on something, there are a lot of great other videos or simply press F1 on one thing you need help with. In the following videos I will share some practical applications how to actually use it that you didn't see on other tutorials. Have a good one, one up indie.